Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. Be seen on WHPR Detroit Live, Comcast Cable Channel 91, on the web at tv33whpr.com, with the TV33 app, on Roku, Google TV, Apple TV, and on Amazon Fire TV. Act now. Time slots are limited. Sign up today and get a free replay with the purchase of your time slot. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only. afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Growing in Grace. I'm your humbly host, Faith Director Chico Whitaker. Um, today, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the absences of Jesus uh, for the first uh, few minutes. And then we're going to talk about what this Sunday is, six days from now. So before we start the program off, I'd like to go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time asking you to forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for our wrongdoing. But Lord, we ask that you will heal our heart and comfort our minds because many people have lost loved ones, Lord. They lost loved ones through sickness, disease, gunshots, or medication due to overdose. But Father, we ask that you send your angels tonight. Send them today to comfort the heart, to save the souls. And Lord, we ask that you make this nation whole by taking away the hatred, the malice, the murderous, we ask that you will uh, give them a heart to repent and save the lost at any cost. Lord, send your uh, angels to minister to those who are in the nursing homes, those who are confined by bed rest. Lord, we ask that you just bless this whole nation, bless our leaders in Washington, D.C., our families, this station, and the world. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, I want to get into the first six verses of Matthew's. Uh, well, I'll get into Matthew's another time. But I want to get into the first six uh, verses of St. John, the 14th chapter. And most of you are familiar with this. This is where Jesus is with his disciples and he's letting them know that he won't be with them too long. He's preparing them to realize that even though he's gone, he's going to send them a comforter. And this is what we need today. We have weary hearts. We have broken marriages. We have Loved ones that's incarcerated. Family members are dying by COVID-19. But Jesus lets us know in Matthews 1, Matthews, not, well, I'm, I'm not Matthews. He lets us know in St. John 1 through 6. He tells us that Chapter 1 tells us and his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled, for ye believe in God, believe also in me. 
He's letting his disciples know that he's going to leave this earth for a, a while. But he tells them that if you believe in God, believe in him also. And he's telling them that in my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I wouldn't have told you. And he told them again, I go and prepare a place for you. This is what Jesus wants us to know. Through death, sickness, salvation, that he's going to heaven. He's going to his father's house, which is his house also. And he's going to prepare a place for the saved, the redeemed, those that are washed in the blood of the Lamb, his people, his nation, his disciples, the world. I go and prepare a place for you, said the Lord. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. I will receive you unto myself. So you're never alone if you have Jesus. You're never by yourself. Even though you don't see him, He's with you always. And to comfort her. I go and prepare a place for you. And I will come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. Also, where the Lord is. Now these are comforting words to us. To the saints. To the believers. To those that are born again, washed in his blood. Yes, there's going to be a day one day when the Lord will crack the sky and take his people home to be with him. Those that are born again, those that are saved, those that have confessed their sins. For if you confess your sins, his mercy will forgive you and save you. But remember, you have to repent because for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And he say, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may be also. This is what the saints are preparing for. This is why many of them are preaching the word of God. This is why they are fellowship with believers and telling one another about the goodness and the glory of God. Because they want to see him again. They want to see their loved ones. They want to go to that special place where Jesus said, you shall be with them also. And whither I go, verse 4 says, and whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Not a lot of people are confused by where the Lord went. We know he conquered death, Hell in the grave. But he rose again. This is why you must have hope. You must believe. You must trust him. If you want to see him. Now here is one of the disciples. They are lying. And they're worried. But Thomas asked the Lord a question. And this is in verse 5. Because he was confused. Thomas said unto the Lord. We know not whether thou goest. 
And how can we know the way? Now this is how many of us act. We believe when we die that we're going to lay in the grave. Some say we're going to a preparatory. Other to Hades. But Jesus said, where I am, ye may be also. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yes, if your heart is troubled, there is hope. Now, when he said, let not your heart be troubled, it could be a lot of things. It can be fear. It can be insecurity. It can be loneliness. It could be pain. And nowadays, many of people are taking medication for their hearts. They're taking nitroglycerin, isorbine, um... There are several medications out that uh, I can't think of right now. And when their heart aches, they feel chest pains, could be heartburn. But when they run to the hospital, the first thing they do when they get you in the back, after they take your blood pressure, they give you an EKG. So they can test the heart to see if it's stress on the heart, see if you're having a heart attack, a stroke, or either a number of things. But Jesus tells us to let not our heart be troubled. Sometimes a heart could be in our mind. Now you say, what do you mean, Brother Whitaker? Sometimes your mind is worried. It's hard to think of, about certain things. Your blood pressure goes sky high. And when you worry, that pain goes to your heart from your mind. Your brain sends signals. And worry brings stress. It brings stress, uh, pressure. It brings strain on your heart. And you become sick. But I told you uh, earlier about a scripture I, that I was on, read Matthews. And to keep from going to it because of lack of time, I will quote it. And it goes like this. Matthews eleven twenty eight. For you Bible scholars, or religious persons, saints, or those that just not sure what the Bible says. I'm going to give it to you straight from Matthews 11, 28. And it says, Come, come unto me. This is the Lord talking. Come unto me, all ye that labor. All, not some. All ye that labor in a herby laden. And I will give you rest. The Lord says, I will give you rest. No matter the stress or whatever you're going to, I will give you rest. Let me go to that verse 1128. And I will read it for you on verse 28 to 31. And it goes like this. 
Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. There's that word heart again that I read from St. John, the 14th chapter. And, for I am lonely in heart, and I will, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. You can find rest in Jesus. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now these are the word of the Lord. Whatever you're dealing with, you can find rest in Jesus. Is there pressure in your life? Seek the Lord. Is there chaos in your life? Read the scriptures. Psalms 23. Yea, do I walk through the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Come to the Lord with all your problems. And he will heal a broken heart. If that marriage is falling apart, take it to Jesus. You shall find rest unto your soul and relaxation. Because everything you need is in the Lord. Search this book. Search the scriptures. For in them ye will have eternal life. John 5, 39. But you got to search and believe. And not only that, meditate that word in your heart that you might not sin against he. Search the scriptures. Now, the second part of the show is dealing with our loved ones. Our mothers, because many of you will be celebrating Mother's Day in six days. Mother's Day will be May the 9th this year. Sunday, May the 9th. So I want to just talk about Mother's Day for a few minutes. This year, Mother's Day will be different than most. You ask why? Due to the last 17 months, we've been under COVID-19. As you know, our life has changed. Our life was upset and our moods have changed. Yes, our moods have changed. Most of our lifestyle are now different. And I'm going to give you a few examples. We don't know who to trust. Today, we don't know who to trust. Friends, neighbors, relatives, doctors, scientists, government people, certain leaders. Today, we are being backed into a corner. Yes. I said backed into the corner. And you might wonder why. And that's because of fear. Fear. Fear is crippling our minds. Some of us stop going out. There's still a lot of people are in their caves. Their men caves, their garages, their basements, 
just to name a few places. They're afraid to go out. Some of us can't visit or see our loved ones. We can't visit right now because COVID-19 COVID got us incarcerated. It got us staying home in jail with our minds. So we can't do what we want to do. We can't go see our loved ones the way we need to. We refuse to fellowship anymore. And when I say fellowship, I mean with friends, saints, go to church, spread the gospel. We refuse to do these things because we're scared. You say, why, Brother Whitaker? Because our nation is in a ball of confusion. We're ashamed. to go next door, to go to school, to go to work, because we don't know when we will catch this dreaded disease. We don't know when. And you know what? Grandparents are craving for attention. Your grandparents, I can't say mine, because the mines are deceased. But some grandparents haven't seen their grandchildren, their babies, their great-grandchildren, their loved ones, and they craving for your attention, your affection, just to come and see them. Be it in a nursing home, hospital, senior citizen place. They craving for attention, but instead they are getting loneliness. Loneliness, loneliness. And that can affect the heart. They can affect the mind. They can affect them. Well, they sometimes give up the will to live. And they die in pain and heartache. Now, I said earlier, six days, there will be Mother's Day. Mother's Day will be May the 9th. What would you do for Mother's Day? Are you willing to make that sacrifice? I ask you again. Are you willing to make that sacrifice? I'm going to answer my own question. Yes, I am. If my mother was living, I would go see her. I would have my mask, uh, I would have my gloves, I would have this paper. Well, this paper right here, just saying, this booklet, that I got my both two, two of my shots from COVID-19, and I've been tested. Thank God I don't have it. But every time you go in the hospital or somewhere, they give you, they spray your hands, give you a mask and everything, which I keep mine. But I would be worried about not passing it on to my loved ones. But if a person brought me into the world, 
the last thing I would like to do is see them in a casket. I would want to see them alive. And I know many of you, just like me, lost your mother, lost someone you love. But how do they know you love them when COVID-19 comes and you're nowhere around? Mother's Day is special. And our loved ones and mothers depend on us. They depend on us now. And once we get older, once we get older, they depend on us to take care of them. Now, as we get ready to travel to visit that special mother, your mother, someone else's mother, a surrogate mother, a godmother, an adopted mother. The list goes on and on. We all have mothers. Sometimes we have fights with them. But we must bury the hatchet and love them. They brought us in this world. So we owe them. Many people will stay put due to fear. And that includes some of you. But we must honor those who gave life to us and protect their legacy. Let me repeat as time goes on. We must protect their le legacy. So whatever you do this Sunday, do it for your mother and protect them. Jesus said before he died, woman, remember thy child. He honored his mother. Now, my mother's been gone since 1987. My older sister took care of us, Deborah Whitaker, and she was just like a mother. She cooked. Uh, fed and uh, worked, made sure that she filled my mother's shoes. And now I must give her honor because she's going through Alzheimer's or dementia. And she can't remember a lot of things. But this Sunday, as I salute my wife, Rosemary Whitaker, I'm going to go to the cemetery, lay some flowers on my mother's grave. Wherever your mother is, please make her happy this year. If you have to send her a telegram, take her a box of candy, give her flowers, or if you just want to take her out, Protect yourself and protect her because this is a special day. No mother shall be alone. If you have COVID or you think she have COVID, you can stand on the porch or a sign. Keep your distance. And as I leave, I want you to remember these words. The message is loud. The sound is clear. Jesus is coming back one of these years. This is one of my quotes. The message is loud. The sound is clear. Jesus is coming back one of these years. Please get ready. Until next time, happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers. We love you. This is Growing in Grace. I'm Chico Whitaker, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, and be healed. God bless you.